the new code of laws, which I suppose it will be necessary for you to make, I would desire you would remember the ladies and be more generous and favorable to them than your ancestors. Do not put such unlimited power into the hands of the husbands. Remember, all men would be tyrants if they could. If particular care and attention is not paid to the ladies, we are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws in which we have no voice or representation. That your sex are naturally tyrannical is a truth so thoroughly established as to admit of no dispute. But those of you who wish to be happy willingly give up that power of, of master for the more tender and endearing one, a friend. Why then not put it out of the power of the, of the vicious and the, the lawless to use us with cruelty and indignity, with impunity? Men of sense in all ages abhor those customs which treat us only as vassals of your sex. Regard us then as beings placed by providence under your protection and in imitation of the supreme being. Make use of that power only for our happiness. There was a time our happiness seemed never ending. I was so sure that where we were heading was right. Life was a road so certain and straight and unbending. Our little road with never a crossroad in sight. Back in the days when we spoke in sin, light voices, women in white and sturdy young men in the Back in the days when I let you make all my choices, we can never go back to before. There was a time my feet were so solidly planted, you'd sail away while I turned my back to the sea.
Cesar Chavez or Rosa Parks that day. Some say Dr. King or Gandhi set them on their way. No matter who your mentors are, it's pretty plain to see that if you've been to jail for justice, you're in good company.
My brother and I got out of every pickle with our grandiose, spectacular make-believe. We struggled to figure our way out of this one. Billy started singing a Blondie song, Die Young, Stay Pretty. I didn't think it was funny, but he was laughing hysterically. Billy, we can't pretend our way out of this one. We're not on stage, we're in the hospital. I know it's not pretty, but it's real. Joe, reality is not what it's cracked up to be. You're going to be famous someday without me. I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be sunny and share. I don't want to be in Paris. The only place I want to be here is with you. How famous do you have to be to feel loved? I love you. Is that enough? Billy was full of magic. And since he's been gone, I've been working my way back to that magic. When I open the door to this theater and I walk out on stage, he's here.
stars in the sky Trees were swaying, you were beautiful And I asked you not to cry She was 
Oh, that the Bronson for aged Hebrews are many like this, the old, and to many I speak, but not, to be frank, with this one. She preferred silence, so I do not know her, and yet I know her. She was not uh, a person, but a whole kind of person. The ones who crossed the ocean and brought with us to America the villages of Russia and Lithuania, and how we struggled and how we fought for the family, for the Jewish home, so that you would not grow up in this strange place, in the melting pot where nothing melted. <laughs> Descendants of this immigrant woman, you do not grow up in America. Your children and their children with the Goyesh names, you do not live in America. No such place exists. Your clay is the clay of some Lidvak shtetl, your heir, the heir of the shtetl, for she carried the old world on her back across the ocean on a boat, and she put it down on Grand Concourse Avenue on Flatbush. She worked that earth into your bones, and you pass it to your children, this ancient, ancient culture. And how you can never make that crossing she made. For in this world, great voyages like that no longer exist. But every day of your lives, the miles, that journey between that place and this one, you cross every day. You understand me? In you, that journey is. So, she was the last of the Mohicans, this one was. Pretty soon, all the old will be dead.
I still can recall some are dead and some are living in my life I love them all but of all these friends and lovers there is no
with self same how and self reasons and self right would shock on you and men like ravenous fishes feed on one another let me put before your thoughts good friend on supposition if you will mark you shall perceive what horrible shape your innovation bears. First, it is a sin. To no error, if I tell you all, you stand in arms against your God himself. Nay, clearly you are. What do you to your souls in doing this? Oh, desperate as you are, wash your foul minds with tears. Those hands that you, like rebels, lifted up against the peace, lift up for peace. Your irreverent knees, make them your feet to kneel for forgiveness. You would take down strangers, kill them, cut their throats, possess their houses, and leave the majesty of law in line to loose in like a hound. Say now the king, as he is clement, if the offender mourn, should so much come to short your great trespass, as but to banish you, whither would you go? Go to France or Flanders, to any German province, to Spain, to Portugal, nay, any where that not adheres to England. You must needs be strangers. Would you be pleased to find a nation of such barbarous temper that breaking out in hideous violence would not allow you an abode on earth? Whet their detested knives at your throats, spurn you like dogs, or, or like that as if God owed not or, or made not you, or that the elements were not appropriate to your comfort, but were chartered unto them? How would you feel to be so used. That is the strangest case. At this, your mountainish inhumanity.